wonderful, wonderful weekend. I feel it already here tonight. Amen. God is doing something awesome. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And we're in the most exciting time the church could be in right now. Yes, sir. Did you know that? Did you know that when you stop and think about it, and I won't be long going to receive an offering, but I just want to say a few words to tell you, God is still on the throne. Amen. He's still on the throne. Amen. You stop and think about when he brought us in. Yes. He brought us in in the most exciting time the church could be brought together tonight. Yes. You look at the world in which we live in, you know, without going into prophecy tonight, that we're very, very close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Amen. the Lord. That means that every service we come together, we must begin to think more like a body Amen. And not Amen. individually. Come on. Amen. Come on. Let me say it again. Come on. We must think more like a body yeah. and not individually. Hey. Yeah. Because I can't make Praise it without Jesus. you, Praise. and you can't make it without me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Because we're, we are members in the body of Christ. Yes. Amen. We've been added. Paul said, you are members of in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, and members in particular. Yeah. Yes. And then I like what he said when he was balancing the the uh, Hagar uh, church world yes. and Sarah. And he said, but ye, brethren, as Isaac was, yes. are children of the promise. Hallelujah. That gives us wonderful hope tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I told Brother Marlowe, we had an opportunity last night to go to Sebring with Brother Lee and uh, a couple of the brethren. It was good for Brother Lee's mother to see him. But in the midst of all of that, God was present in that little car coming back. Come on. And we were contrasting the day in which we live in with, with what's already been. And we were, I was talking about the law. And Brother Marlowe was, was talking about something greater than the law. And I was standing up for the law. And he was standing up for grace. Amen. And when I got home, the Lord began to open my mind and open my spirit. Come on. Yeah. You know, it came to me, and I'm, I'm rejoicing tonight. The reason I opened like I did, because... If the law had everything that the soul of man needed, then Jesus would have come to the law church. Amen. Amen. Have it, amen. Hallelujah. He did not come to the law church. No. He came as our Redeemer tonight. Yes. He could have come to the law church. Bible said in Hebrews chapter 7, yes. if you have your Bibles tonight, yes. in Hebrews chapter 7 yes. and verse 19, it said, For the law made nothing perfect. Oh, as great as it was and as mighty as it was and as powerful as God swept through, God married Israel, but Jesus married the church. God was the head of Israel. God was looking for a peculiar people that was serious of good works, but they lacked something in their life. They couldn't have the total package, or Jesus would have appeared to the law. But when I got it last night and I got home, I said, yes, Lord, you're my redeemer. You're the one that redeemed the church tonight. You're the one that you didn't come in the days of Moses and they had little light touches. Solomon said he skipped upon the hills. Yes. And he pounced upon the mountains. Yes. And they had little light touches of God. But Jesus said foxes have holes and birds have nests. But he said the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. He said that before he resurrected. He said that before he prayed the, he paid the supreme price. But let me tell you, he was hung on a tree. And he was, uh, he was smitten for you. And he was smitten for me. And he is your redeemer. And blessed be his name now. He's my redeemer. saved by that wonderful blood. 
and as powerful as the law was. The law was a powerful instrument. The world was already depraved and lost. Coming out of the garden, it was it was a disaster to say the least. Yes. Bible tells us in the beginning uh, that uh, Genesis chapter one and verse one said in the beginning God. Yeah. When he closed yeah. that book of Genesis, when he closed the last verse, have you ever noticed it said to a coffin in Egypt? Yes. Yes. That's just about where mankind was. Yes, sir. Right. They lost that wonderful glory, and Adam lost that connection. He died first in his spirit. He didn't die from the outer extremities. He died first. <laughs> and the most important thing that you must do tonight is not a new hairdo, but a soul washing and a spirit redeeming and giving your spirit over to God. says I'm to give my body. I know it says that we're to offer our body. That makes a lot of people mad because they want to live like they want to. They don't want to make any changes internally or externally. Either one. But the most important thing that God is looking for tonight is your spirit. And God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is looking. How many know he's looking for something in our spirits toward him tonight? Yes. Yeah. And really, that's 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 what worship is all, all about to begin with. But the law made nothing oh, yes. perfect. Oh, yes. But the bringing in of this hope. Everybody say hope. Hope. Do you need hope tonight? Yes. Does anybody need a hope in this building tonight? Yes. I'm telling you, we live in a hopeless generation. A world that's lost. We've got a promise tonight. We've got a hope to think about that he could have come to a law church and finished the work up, brethren, but he didn't do it. He came to our lives. He redeemed us. He came to the church. What did Paul say? He said in Hebrews chapter 1, if you'd put it on that electronic Bible back there, in Hebrews chapter 1, it said, But God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake unto the fathers, I'm glad he spoke to Abraham. I'm glad that he dealt with Abraham. He's a father of the faithful. Without Abraham, there'd be no faith. But it took more than just an experience with Abraham. I'm glad he appeared to Moses and holy men of old. I'm glad that, uh, that he did. The Bible makes it clear that he appeared uh, to them. That holy men of old spake as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. He said, knowing this first and no prophecy of the scripture is by any private interpretation. But holy men of old spake as they were moved on. Prophets are, prophets are lonely men. Prophets are lonely men. Prophets are, uh, are difficult men. But aren't you glad we've got some prophets in the earth? I'm glad there was prophets in the Old Testament. And prophets are not always easy. But the Bible said he moved upon them. Yes. With the Holy Ghost. Yes. Without him moving upon him, we'd have no Bible That's tonight. The there'd be no right. there'd be no communication. That's it. Right. This Bible is not just another religious book tonight. Amen. It's the word of the Almighty yeah. God. Yeah. The Muslims will tell you that it's just another religious book. That it's no different than the Koran tonight. But there's not one drop of blood in the Koran tonight. But this Bible is dripping. With the blood of Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes it is. Hey, Praise, 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 Praise the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Yes. This is the immutable word of God. Right. This Bible is not somebody's idea. No. It isn't somebody's figment of their imagination tonight. No, this not. Bible is the word of God. It's not like the word. It's not close to the word. It's not almost the word. It is the word of the living God tonight. And know this, that you cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the 
the mouth of God tonight. How many love his wonderful word here tonight? We got to sing and we had a wonderful song service tonight. We need all of the ingredients to make a wonderful church. But don't ever attempt to have a good church without some powerful preaching of the Word of God. Don't think that you can build anything in this world without a good solid foundation under your feet in the Word of God. And I said he didn't just bring it to the law but he brought it to us. That's a wonderful scripture I found, and, and I'm not going to go very deep into this, but in Isaiah chapter 49, yeah. if you have your Bibles, in Isaiah 49, there's, um, there's a scripture here that is showing the goal, God's goal for, for the world. And as I said, it, he, he had a purpose. He's, he's not a helder skelter. Uh, take a chance, uh, roll the dice kind of God. He's a God that is exact in his dealing yes. with mankind. When he didn't call you, he didn't take a chance on you coming. He knew you were coming. Yes. You didn't save yourself, he saved you. You didn't call yourself, he called you. You didn't choose him, but he chose you. He said, you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. Let you bring forth fruit and let the fruit should remain. Yes, yes. But there's a scripture here yeah, yeah. in verse 6. This is a wonderful <laughs> chapter. It's a messianic chapter. Isaiah was a messianic prophet. And it's a wonderful uh, book that shows the plan of God, the goal of God. God is a Messiah. God not only uh, uh, dealing with us uh, from an external uh, type of a relationship as he did with the law, but he began to show that God was to become a man, and that man was to relate to you and I, that he wasn't just a deity, he wasn't just some kind of infinitesimal, uh, strange happening in the supernatural uh, dimension, but he came to this earth. He came to relate to every one of us. How many have had pain in your life? How many have had suffering and how many gone through sicknesses and problems and circumstances? Jesus can relate to you because he became a man. Hallelujah. Amen. He became a man. He became a human being. He brought Israel back to himself. Yes. But he did something else besides bring Israel back. In verse 6, he, this is God talking now uh, to the Messiah. He said, it, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be a servant to raise up tribes uh, to Jacob. In other words, uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a wonderful thing, but it's a light thing. It's not a, it's not a heavy thing that you would bring forth salvation to the Jews. After all, the Bible said he came to his own and his own received him not. But he said, look, he said, your work, I'm going to call you uh, as a Messiah. I'm going to call you uh, as, a, uh, as a redeemer. I'm going to send you down into the womb of a Jewish woman. I'm going to plant you in the womb of a Jewish woman and you're going to be a man, and you're going to relate to human beings, and you're not only going to save people, but I'm going to make you a light to the entire world. Amen. Now that's what he said. Amen. That's what he meant. Amen. I'm not only going to let you minister to your people, but I'm going to make you a light to the Gentile nation. And here's what he said. He said, it's a light thing that you should be a servant to you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore. And he did that. That's why God will restore Israel because he'll restore what, what, what was already uh, touched in, uh, in the early rain. In other words, there'll be nobody touched uh, in the latter rain that didn't have some uh, temporary touch uh, in the early rain. And I, I, won't, I won't go into that. There's a couple of... A couple of tribes left out in the book of Revelation. We should ask ourselves why were those tribes left out and why are they included uh, in the Old Testament? I'll move from that now. But this says, uh, I will also give thee 
as a light. Everybody say light. light. Aren't you glad he's a light tonight? Yes. Do you need a light? Yes. Have, have you ever been? Have you ever been in the? Uh, have you ever been in the dark? Uh, have you ever stumbled in the dark? Have you ever tried to find a light and the power was off? You know how desperate that is. Have you ever, you ever been hours upon hours without light? And isn't it wonderful when flood or power and light, Brother Tom, turns it back on? Amen. Amen. Isn't it wonderful to have lights in this building tonight? But did you know the greatest light, the greatest energy, the greatest luminary in the sky is Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I'm going to praise him. He loves him. I'm going to lift him up. Amen. Because he's a light tonight. I say he's our light. I say he's our light. He's not just to the Jewish world, but he's mine. And he's a light to the Gentile people. And we're a part of that great church that's getting ready to be made up. I'll finish this now. He said, I'll give you as a light for the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation. Isn't that a beautiful scripture there? I say, isn't that a beautiful scripture there? He said, I, I'll let you be my salvation. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Uh, now, if you're one, that's, you've got, that's, a little, that's a little tough. But he had to send his son here to be the light. And to be the salvation, he said, I'm not going to let you be your salvation to the Gentiles, but I'll make you, I'll put confidence in you, and you'll be my salvation. So I'm glad to be here tonight. I'm glad to be here. Are you glad to be here tonight? Well, if you're going to fight, go ahead. We are, uh, we're, 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 we're getting ready to take off around here. We are getting ready to be a part of something wonderful. And uh, I, I believe the key, I believe the key really is, and it's difficult to do, but I think the key, I'm convinced that the key tonight is to think as a body. To begin to move as a body. To begin to uh, change this mentality that our pastor's been talking yes, about. Yes, yes. And begin to move as a body. Move as one. And when you see the cloud move, when you see the encampment of Israel, and you see that glory begin to depart from Israel, and you see the cloud move. How many would say, Brother Rhodes, I want to move. Don't leave me behind. Don't leave me behind. I say to you, don't leave me behind. And it's, you know, what we're doing is very rare. It really is. You know, they pointed out last night in Sebring, I, I don't think of it because I've been around a long time, like a lot of you. But you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a rare thing. For this many brethren to stay together for 40 years and plus. You know that we have men here, and not only that, wonderful sisters here. That's we we have worshipped since we were children together here. Yes, sir. Amen. And did you know the devil would like to tear that up? Do you know that? Do you know that? Can I have an amen? Is that right? Did you know the devil would like to tear that up? Amen. And they pointed out over there last night that we have, we have stayed together. One of the things that uh, Brother John said, I thought it was a compliment. I took it as a compliment. He said, there's one thing about it. He said, we've had our ups and downs. Sure. Uh, we've had our roller coaster rides. Yes. Yes. None of us have been perfect. All of us have come through a lot of things. But you know what? We're still together. Come on, brother. We're still together. We're still together. We're still worshiping together. Hallelujah. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 H
um, I don't think I have the Bible now, but <coughs> Sister Phyllis gave me a poem she wrote. And I thought I had it. I have about 30 Bibles. And um, somebody let me borrow this Bible. It's a Hebrew-Greek key study Bible. I, I'm, I'm very uh, fascinated with it. And uh, uh, that's beside the point. But uh, I had a poem that she wrote. And if I can bring it one service, uh, I'd like to read it. Yes. And in this poem, it's a prophecy she gave a number of years ago. And she said that young people would be coming back, that God would be bringing people back to the Braden and Church. Yes. Well, just look around you tonight. Just shake your neighbor's hand and say, I'm glad he brought you back. I'm, I'm glad the Lord brought you back. Amen. Just go ahead and say to them, I'm glad he brought you back. Because God brought some of us back. And, and you look at, and, and God's not through yet. God's not through bringing it back. There's a great restoration. Now look, I don't want to be too lengthy tonight, but I want to leave you, I want to leave you looking for something awesome. There's a great restoration coming tonight. Amen. And there's more coming back. Yep. And I claim my family. Do you claim your family? Oh, I claim yeah. my family yeah. for Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So if we'll stick together, you'll see what God will do. Benjamin yes, Franklin, when they signed the Declaration of Independence, he, uh, he made a statement. He said, and it was recorded in history. It's in the annals of history that he stood up in that great hall in Philadelphia and he said one thing for sure they were getting ready to sign the Declaration of Independence yes. and he said to them he said there's one thing for sure he said we'll all hang together or we'll hang separate yes, sir. I think we've got to hang together tonight Amen. I believe it's time to stay together I don't think it's time to separate I think it's time to stay together Amen. and to see the great vision. How many still have a vision? And still got a vision. How many would say, Preacher, I've got a vision tonight. I still got a vision. The devil hasn't taken my vision. I still got a vision. Hallelujah. So I'm going to receive an offering tonight. That's okay. Tell you the Lord loves you, and I want to give a praise report. We prayed for Brother and Sister Bivens, and God is doing a miracle in that family. I say God's doing a miracle. Now, he didn't tell me to do this, but I feel led to do it. I'm going to pray. I want everybody to pray. He come up and made a request yesterday. said he wanted us to pray, and uh, he needs... Uh, What'd you say, six bedroom house? Wow. He said he needs, and you can see why he needs. It's not, you know, the Bible said, uh, um, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk with upright. That's right. right, right. And he needs a six bedroom house. He needs more room for his family. Yes. How many will pray that he'll find a bigger house and God will make a way? around town and you see a big old fixer-upper and it's got five or six bedrooms in it well I think about Brother Bivens yes. and let's see if, uh, if see if we can locate him a house won't that be good looks yes, like the Lord's good. really really yes, doing so something good. for us alright so let's get ready to uh, receive our offering tonight and uh, uh, get a good song however they want to do the music God bless all of you. We love you very much. How many are looking forward to a great weekend tonight? Give you a praise. Put your hands. 